Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Flaherty. This is Board Games and Bourbon. And right now we are going to talk about Pixel Glory Light and Shadow. Now this is a redo of a game that was first published in uh, 2015, but has new rules. And I gotta tell you, it's actually one of my favorite survival games currently. Um, it certainly replaced a few of the other dungeon crawl ish games that are light it says it plays one to four players it has a solo a cooperative and a competitive mode 30 minutes is right it's very fun and i'll show you and talk about it all the same time all right what we see in front of us is the first phase of pixel glory which is the auction phase it's called the town phase but it's an auction phase in each of these little placards uh every player will get one of these and these little placards are going to represent two things one is going to represent your health which you can choose to make higher or lower depending on the difficulty you want in the game and then combo points which are kind of like a uh, catch-up mechanism you know if you're not successful during a round you can get a little combo bonus and if you get three you can trade that in for bonuses at the end helps you kill stuff okay now each of these people have a color that synergizes in the game so like for player one here they have red cards player one will have a red deck uh, two yellow three blue and the fourth player gets green and why that's important is during the auction phase what we're going to do is we're going to be battling for cards up here and the cards are going to have different powers that will benefit our colors more powerfully so for example if i go to this blue one over here okay this blue one over here now anyone can use the top power okay which says nothing okay but the second power on the bottom says uh defeat all elemental monsters currently revealed and basically there's a bunch of elements that's what all the colors are and you can defeat them and it says times two blue and what that means is you can activate the bottom power the top power is always available in this case there's none but the bottom power is available to you if you it played two blue cards that turn okay so that card makes most sense for the blue player to have now why would you ever compete for cards in solo and co-op you don't really want to compete you want to synergize and help everyone be in a good situation but in the cooperative version of this game uh, or excuse me in the competitive version of this game you might have no choice like you can see right now there's four players but there's two yellows on the board you might really want to get it for yourself because the top power is super strong and you want that in your deck you also want to deny the other person that benefit and what are the differences in solo and cooperative in solo mode you're playing as two people uh trying to make it through the dungeon in cooperative you're playing as two or more people trying to get through the dungeon in competitive uh you are Yes, you're trying to survive, but you're trying to be the person who survives the longest. So you might do things like take spells for yourself so the other person dies, or you might not kill a monster on your turn because you want it to attack your opponent in the game. Now, the way you're going to bid here is with these fixed betting cards. And in a way, this is like Reiner Kinesia's High Society. Uh, the numbers are one through nine, and you bid. And once you use the card, your bid card's out of the game. So if I spend my number nine early on, it'll never be available for the rest of the game. You do all that, and then you build up your personal deck of nine. You shuffle them all together, so you have a whole fistful of uh, basic and you're going to get like nine uh, better powers as the game go on. Once you do that, now it's time to go on to the dungeon phase, which is very fast and very easy and very cool. Okay, so now we're looking at the dungeon phase in the game, and it's actually quite easy. What you're going to do is you're going to put out three baddies that have to be fought against. And each of these baddies, and I'll take this card as an example, I'll hold it up here. When we look at this card, what it's going to tell you is the name of the creature and what it does. So in this case, King Crab, it says it has an ongoing. You can't play spells targeting King Crab while another water monster is revealed. Water monsters are blue. So you can't use a spell on this guy, which is an upgraded power, until somebody else in the game that's blue goes away in which case this is fair game. Now, this says it has 13 life, so it means you have to attack him with cards that add up to 13 to get him eventually out of the game. Uh, those attacks and health are represented by these little red markers you put on somebody. And then once you kill this person and you're the last person to do it, you're gonna get a bunch of crowns. Now, in solo and cooperative, you're simply trying to get to the end of the game, but in competitive, 
you are trying to have the most crowns. Okay, you're also trying to kill people. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this deck of cards with the cards that you just bid on. You're going to shuffle it and you're going to play it. And that's all there is. You draw four. Now, one of the good things in here is when you draw four cards, it gives you an option to stick one on the side so you can use later. So you could put a card on the side and then ultimately use five cards on a turn. And then uh, you're trying to kill somebody and a lot of things are going to happen in this game. You know, like there's no way you're going to get nine points of death. Uh, this one says nine, that one says eight, that says 10. That can be really hard. So what you can do in this game is you can do something called combos. And this is another thing I really like about this game. It gives you a player aid. So it tells you when you do your combat, right, you may keep one card in your resource, reserve area, and you can use it later. Uh, and you can heal if you kill two monsters, okay? But there's also damage you'll get if you don't kill anyone, but there is a catch-up mechanism, and that's called the combo points. So the combo points means you can gain one combo point when you do not kill a monster on your turn. Okay, that's going to happen a lot. Um, you have to spend three combos to draw four cards in your hand, so... You could have four plus four, eight. If you have a reserve card, you had nine, you'll do something really special. Or you can kill an elemental monster. So that automatically puts somebody into your hand and gives you points. At the end of your turn, uh, if you do not kill anyone, you have to take two damage to yourself and then everyone else has to take one damage. So in solo and cooperative, you really don't want people to be taking damage, although there are cards to heal. But in the cooperative, or in the competitive rather, you definitely want to let people you know, be taken out. So as the game progresses on, you're going to be wanting them to take damage, uh, even if it damages you more. But if you feel like you can survive and really squeak it out, it's to your benefit. Some of these people here damage people when they're, uh, it's their turn and they weren't killed and stuff like that. And there's just a bunch of effects. It's very easy to understand. It goes through quickly. This game has player aids that make playing it so incredibly simple. It's actually a game for me that, you know, of this weight, which I would say is like a two out of five, um, probably replaces one deck dungeon for me. That was a fun game, but I played through the cards so often that I kind of got burned out on it. Um, but here, because you're competing for these different decks, the co-op works better. But even as a solo game, which is how I play a lot of things, there's a lot of different strategies. You know, you can go for the different colors and see how it works. Uh, you can kind of mix and match them to see what happens. No matter what you do, though, um, there's only one boss in the end that you try to battle. And this is a, a, just a beast of a guy here. Let's see if I can get the camera on there. The Dungeon Lord, 23 health, three crowns if you can do it in the end. And the ongoing player uh, that kill another monster take one damage. Players that kill another monster take one damage. My goodness. Wow, the weakness. He has no weakness. Players that kill another monster take a damage. So why is that important? Well, let's suppose we're going through this game. And there's two monsters left. We've gone through this whole deck. We pulled the last three monsters, and this is on the board. Uh oh, so what that means is, um, even though you might be trying to get crowns for yourself from these other guys, if you actually kill them, he's also going to penalize you as well. So there's a lot of factors in there that are kind of at play. Definitely the competitive is the way to go, but I got to tell you, it's a really strong solo and cooperative effort. So if you are in the mood for a game like this, I would highly recommend... Pixel Glory. The, the rule book is actually really easy. This rule book here has been stepped on a thousand times by a cat, but there's not much to do, not much to read. It's very clear. The player aid makes it so simple. This is actually a really good suggestion and pickup, uh, according to me. So I hope you enjoy it. Talk to you later, everyone. Bye.